Our other top story tonight, the man who inspired Donald Trump and why critics say this man's disgusting amorality continues to infect American politics today. My special guest for this report, an Emmy Award winning writer making his first appearance on The Beat, New York Magazine's Frank Rich. He has tackled politics and theater for The New York Times, and he's a producer for HBO's Veep. His latest cover story in New York Magazine profiles the endurance of Roy Cohn, who literally led the Red Scare McCarthy hearings as chief counsel for Senator Joe McCarthy and worked at the intersection of the mafia, New York nightlife, and a wide cast of highly questionable characters. Cohn was a lawyer accused of basically working the wrong side of the law. Rich writes about his indictments and scandals, including accusations of bank and securities law violations, perennial tax evasion, bribery, extortion, theft. Cohen was charged and acquitted of five different crimes. He was ultimately disbarred for misconduct. He's considered both infamous and something of a legend, a character in Angels in America. And anyone familiar with New York's underworld can detect a hint of Cohn in the question that arises in so many crime stories. Do criminals want a lawyer to defend them or to help them be criminals? Seriously, when the going gets tough, you don't want a criminal lawyer, right? You want a criminal lawyer. Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Consider that as the context for a 26-year-old Donald Trump who linked up with Cohn and chose him as the lawyer and enforcer in New York. Trump literally carried a picture of him in his pocket. Cohn reached behind his desk and pulled out a picture of Roy Cohn. And he asked everybody in the room, do you know who this is? And yeah, it's Roy Cohn. Well, Roy is my attorney. Nobody wants to face Roy Cohn. Conclusion. To build the largest concrete structure in New York City, turn again to Roy Cohn. Cohn is also the lawyer for the New York crime boss who controls the concrete business. Payoffs from contractors are dropped off at Cohn's office, so he may get paid twice for his services here. But then, you get who you pay for. But is that all just history? Cohn is dead. But Frank Rich argues his scurrilous mindset is alive, and the Trump era is testing our ability to combat gutter fighters, especially when it feels like maybe their approach is successful. Rich quotes Cohn's imagined dialogue in the play Angels in America, where he says, was it legal? F legal. Am I a nice man? F nice. They say terrible things about me in the nation? F the nation. You want to be nice or you want to be effective? Frank Rich joins me now. An honor to have you at the table. Thanks for having me. If the Cone Trump playbook is effective, does that mean more people mimic it, and how should society deal with that? Well, my, it, is, it can be effective, and one thing to remember about Cohn was that he wasn't even much of a lawyer. He was a bomb thrower. He was someone who would, you know, stall, do all countersuits and everything to, to keep justice from happening and law from taking its course. Um, the way we may have to stop it really takes place largely in this city because one of the points of my piece is that Roy Cohn and Donald Trump were nurtured by a New York establishment, including people in the media, liberals, Democrats, as well as Republicans and conservatives, who like this kind of fixer, who like someone who can get them Yankee tickets or get the, the right concrete company to build a skyscraper or fix something at City Hall, a tax abatement for a real estate development. And one of the interesting things about both these guys is that they were helped by places like the New York Times, uh, 60 Minutes in the case of Roy Cohn, um, and all sorts of public officials, uh, regardless of political party. That's uh, such an important thread in your piece, uh, that there is plenty of evil around, but the evil that thrives usually does so with a lot of accommodation. Exactly. And, and you say Vichy Democrats, reading, reading from you, Vichy Democrats gain power and consolidate it with the help of allies among the elites of New York's often nominally democratic and liberal establishment. Uh, and because you're so theatrical, allow me to try to keep up with you. <laughs> it's reminiscent of when uh, the Joker tells Batman in the Dark Knight series, oh yeah, sure, you're good but you're only as good as you're allowed to be. And he talks about how the elites of the city of Gotham, they'll go along with what they need to go along. I think that's exactly right. I think that uh, that rings a chord or touches a chord because there is a lot of Gotham, that Gotham in the actual Gotham. And people 
there's a favors bank, an unofficial favors bank, and people, you know, they'll tolerate terrible behavior from a Cohen or a Trump, antisocial behavior, vulgarity, you name it, outlaw behavior even, if they can get something for it. And it's, it's constantly favors are being traded back and forth. Cohen talked about being proud of Trump. Let's take a look at that. And we all know Donald for such a long time. I'm so proud of him, aren't you? Yeah, when you think back, Nikki, the way you and I knew Donald when, and there's so many great events in his life. Tonight is the opening of probably the most important building in the world, marble waterfalls, sort of restores your faith in the fact that progress, that uh, free enterprise is not dead at all. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the early 1980s. And, uh, you know, Roy Cohn had been a has-been in America. After the Army of McCarthy he, uh, in hearings in 1954, he and McCarthy were in ruins. McCarthy d soon died of alcoholism. Yet Cohn staged a comeback in New York City. So here he is 25 more years uh, later after uh, Army McCarthy, and he's you know, the bell of the ball and, and the host of the festivities. One of the things that's striking about him, and we're looking at more of this footage, the, the kind of person he was, uh, and he, he was a real gangster type. Uh, and I don't use that word loosely. Uh, and he represented gangsters, but he also had that persona, which was not, oh, we're going to file a motion, sir, that may delay your process. No, it right. was much more than that, and that's, that's record evidence of that. I want to play for you the way, though, that part of what he did was say, I'll win in court when I can, and I'll win out of court the rest of the time, so I win either way, so get the hell out of my face, which is what Donald Trump reportedly said he liked about him. Here he was describing one of the legal victories where they did go up against the city on behalf of Trump and win. He believes you can fight City Hall. I believe you can fight City Hall. And we both fought it together and uh, got a $74 million Trump Tower tax abatement, which the city refused to give us by going to the highest court of the state, which decided seven to nothing in our favor. If Trump learned all that from him and it's working thus far, then what do you see, not that your job is to give actual advice, but what do you see as the counterpunch? I, I would just submit for consideration that Roy Cohn's misdeeds did ultimately catch up with they him. They did. He was disbarred. He did end his life in disrepute. Yeah, and I feel pretty strongly that's going to happen to Donald Trump. It's a slow process. It's not an immediate process. I don't think it's going to happen through impeachment. I think it's going to happen one way or another through the rule of law. He's just too entangled and stuff, and we have to wait. But I do, feel, I do believe the rule of law will triumph over Trump, as ultimately it did over Roy Cohn, even though both these guys had many powerful allies uh, to help them do their, their stuff. Is uh, working on Veep harder than writing? Articles? <laughs> no, it's 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 to it's a lot of fun. It's totally different. But I I, I love I love both of them. But uh, Veep, you know, it's it's make putting them on a show, and it's fiction, so you can make up anything you want. You don't ever have to say the name Donald Trump on Veep. Well, I'll tell you, fiction is one thing. That's why we we find fake news exhausting because you have to make it all from scratch. <laughs> I know. I don't you know. know how you, I don't know how you. I would rather work with facts, but the fake news part it <laughs> just takes time. I know. Well, you understand what we're up with the farce of Veep. Uh, Frank Rich, I really appreciate you coming on the Veep for the first time. We hope to get you back when your schedule allows. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.